and welcome. We're going to make some bruschetta um, topping, and then we're going to use it later to put on some top of, uh, to put on top of some chicken. Um, but you could use this as an appetizer, um, a salad, lots of things that you can use this for, and it is so absolutely delicious. Um, and if you see that I've got something cooking here, it is my wonderful bacon jam that we're making. So make sure you check out that video. But we're just going to let it hang out and keep cooking while we make the bruschetta. Now, um, interesting note, my daughter, when she graduated from college, she um, got a position as an au pair in Rome, Italy. Now, you would think in Rome, Italy, there would be the most wonderful Italian food that, you know, you've ever tasted. But Dulcie was really funny telling me that <clears throat> she never had bruschetta that tasted as good as mine. She also said she didn't have spaghetti sauce that tasted as good as mine either. Um, but I happen to be kind of heavy on the spices, so I think that's what she was used to. But um, when she had to go to a couple of parties, she would make the bruschetta and take it, and everybody would always ask her for the recipe and to please bring that um, when she comes again because they thought it was so delicious. So even in Rome, they like this. So we're going to start by just kind of chopping up a sweet onion. Just kind of a rough chop. I mean, you don't want huge pieces when you bite into it because this topping is all raw. Um, we're not going to be cooking it. So, you know, get it cut to a size that you don't mind biting into. This would be a great time to use that little Vidalia chop, uh, um, chop wizard utensil that I showed you on a different video because it would also chop your tomatoes for you really quickly. All right. Now we're going to throw our onions into our bowl. There we go. All right, next we're just going to run our knife through the about two cloves of garlic. One nice thing about this bruschetta topping um, is that you can kind of just, I mean, it's more of a process instead of an exact science or an exact recipe. So if you like less onion and more tomato, then do that. Or if you want less garlic or more garlic, you can do that. Um, it's just learning the process. And I think the most important part is, um, you know, with your spices that you don't get stingy. All right, garlic's in. Now we're going to take some Roma tomatoes. I'm just going to cut the ends off there, and we're going to do just a, a rough chop on these as well. I think my knife is about to the point of needing sharpening. You know, when I was a little girl, I remember my mom used to take her um, scissors uh, sewing scissors and getting and get them sharpened. There was a man in town that did that. And you know, I don't know of any place like that anymore. It's like we don't do we don't sharpen our scissors and and our knives. They kind of you know we look at them as disposable. But when you've got a nice knife that you like, um, you know, you want to take care of it. So we we'll have to look into that. In fact, if anybody knows good knife sharpener, put it in the comments below. Let me know. All right. So we're going to cut up a couple more of these tomatoes. And again, like I said, if you want more tomatoes then, and less onion, then you can definitely do that. So I'll just keep chopping the tomatoes and we'll be right back. All right, we're just about finished chopping up our tomatoes. But I have filled this bowl up, so I think I'm going to get a bigger bowl to kind of give it a mix in. So let's just transfer our onions and tomatoes, garlic, and get the rest of it in there, and all those nice seeds and juice. There we go. All right, let's put it over here so you can see. Now we're going to um, take some basil, and I'm just going to 
grab these leaves off. All right, and just kind of stack them up and roll them. It just makes it a little bit easier to chop them. This is actually called a chiffonade if you want to get all fancy. The chiffonade is, is the long little strings. And if you want to leave it that way, you can, but I think they're a little bit long. So once we get through this, we're going to go back and kind of mince it a little bit better. But if anybody ever says, do you know what a chiffonade is? Now you can say, yes, I do. So that's the chiffonade, but we're just going to kind of go back through. Oh, smells so good. Fresh basil. Yum. When you start cutting into it and those oils, they just smell so wonderful. All right, now let's put that in. I wonder how my husband would like it if I just made a perfume out of that basil. Oh, that and garlic. That'd be kind of cool, wouldn't it? <laughs> okay, wipe my hands here. And I tell you what, this bacon jam that we're making, huh, smells fabulous. So make sure you um, check this video out too. All right, now we're going to just use um, my house seasoning blend, which is a blend of onion powder, garlic powder, salt, and pepper, and you can get that recipe on my website. There we go. And now we're going to drizzle on some olive oil. And like I said, this is kind of more of a process instead of an exact science. So we'll have the recipe on the website, you know, with suggested uh, amounts, but it's just so easy to add more or less just depending on what you like. All right. Now, my favorite part, the balsamic vinegar. Yum. Now that was one thing my daughter did say was absolutely wonderful in Italy, was the balsamic vinegar. She did enjoy that. And fresh mozzarella, she said was delicious too. All right, now, as you can see, we've got just a nice chunky mix with the onions and the garlic and the tomatoes, the basil, the house seasoning blend, some olive oil, and with that balsamic vinegar. And so I would just suggest that you just give it a real quick taste and, um, you know, see if it's got enough. Mm. That is pretty good, but I think I'm going to hit it again with a little bit more balsamic. And I think also just a little bit of pepper. There's pepper in the house seasoning, but I think it needs just a tad more. So there we go. Like I said, don't be afraid of seasonings. That's what makes life fun, is when it's spicy. So you kind of have to throw caution to the wind and, you know, if you add a little bit too much this time, then you'll know next time. But it's always better than not adding enough. In my, um, in my kitchen back in Georgia, I actually cut um, some wall vinyl and it said season everything with love. And I think that's very important that you put love into everything that you're cooking, but make sure you're seasoning it too. You don't want life to be bland and you don't want your food to be bland. So, all right, so we've got the bruschetta ready. It looks and smells delicious. And what we're gonna do with this bruschetta is I'm going to show you in another video uh, kind of my technique of how I cut chicken um, so that it cooks really, really quickly because we're going to do some cutlets, some thin cutlets. And um, we're actually going to do two different kinds of toppings for the chicken. One, a rosemary butter, and then the other one, a bruschetta topping. So make sure you check that video out, video out too. But this would be wonderful just in a bowl, and you could take it um, with some gluten-free bread 
if you're eating bread. Um, if you're not doing grains, then uh, you could definitely use some paleo crackers. You could um, use cucumbers. Um, it would be wonderful just um, over spaghetti squash. Uh, all kinds of different ways that you can use this bruschetta topping. I think you're really going to enjoy it.